Welcome to Suspension Simplified by MTB Dev. Today, we're going to take a look at fork offset. When mountain bike specific frames were first introduced, the industry quickly adopted 37 millimeters as the standard offset. As 29ers became popular, Gary Fisher wanted to imitate the handling characteristics of the contemporary 26 inch mountain bikes, and so the 51 millimeter offset was born. To understand the differences, we're going to start with a few assumptions. One, the bike is on level ground. Two, the suspension is at rest or fully extended. And three, fork travel is parallel to the head tube angle. Next, we need to clarify some definitions. Steering axis is an imaginary line drawn through the center of the head tube angle and intersecting with the ground. It is essentially interchangeable with head tube angle. Contact patch is the center of area where the tire touches the ground. In this case, it is directly below the axle. Trail is the distance along the ground between the contact patch and the steering axis. The distance from the contact patch to its steering axis determines the amount of leverage and therefore mechanical advantage that exists between the two points. This can be seen in the wheels of an office chair. The force acting upon the contact patch is friction from the terrain. Therefore, as steering axis is pulled in one direction, the friction acts upon the contact patch in the opposite direction. Because the contact patch follows behind the steering axis, the force is corrective and brings the wheel in line with the direction that the rider is traveling. A mountain bike's fork offset is the shortest distance between the axle and the steering axis. Because the axle sits in front of the steering axis, this should place the contact patch in front as well, resulting in a negative trail measurement. However, as the steering axis slackens, the point at which it intersects with the ground moves forward, eventually passing in front of the contact patch. The trail measurement is once again positive. We can use the calculator on mtb.dev to isolate the change in trail in order to articulate the percentage change difference. The bike shown has a 66.9 degree head tube angle and 29 by 2.5 inch tires. We will compare both 51 and 44 millimeter offset forks. Changing from the 51 to the 44 millimeter offset increases trail by approximately 7.6%. The problem with using trail to compare bike, fork, and wheel combinations is that it fails to accurately represent the amount of leverage uh, the contact patch has over the steering. Thus, we will use mechanical trail. Mechanical trail is the shortest distance between the contact patch and the steering axis. As offset is shortened, both trail and mechanical trail are increased. However, mechanical trail is the actual value used for calculating leverage between the contact patch and steering axis. Returning to the example of the bike shown, mechanical trail is boosted by 7.2% when moving to the shorter offset. The most notable downside to a shorter offset is an increased susceptibility to wheel flop. This refers to the wheel's tendency to collapse toward the side at low speeds and is quantifiable. As the wheel turns to the side, it lowers the front end. The difference in front end height with the wheel straight ahead compared to at its equilibrium give us our wheel flop measurement. Using the same example bike, the shorter offset worsens wheel flop by 7.9%. The increased mechanical trail also reduces the amount of leverage that you have over the wheel, making it more difficult to control wheel flop at low speeds. This has been mitigated in modern mountain bikes as wider handlebars allow the rider to exert more force on the wheel. The increased mechanical trail serves to bring the handlebars leverage back to a more traditional feel. It's worth noting that while offset and head tube angle are separate and distinct, Shortening the offset does tilt the whole bike back, producing a slacker head tube angle. This also shortens the reach in front center and slackens the seat tube angle. However, these effects are nominal. 
Up to this point, we've examined only static numbers. However, things change dynamically during a ride. If a fork dives too much while riding, it'll steepen the head tube angle considerably. This results in a shortened mechanical trail. Moreover, the point at which the tire contacts the ground heavily influences the momentary mechanical trail of a given setup. As the contact patch moves forward, such as when rolling over a steep rock, the mechanical trail is shortened and can even become negative. Even the circumference of your tire influences the trail measurements. Larger tires have longer trail values. With this perspective, we can begin to see that shorter offsets will benefit some riders more than others. Casual and cross-country riders will benefit from the balanced feel of traditional offsets during low-speed riding and while climbing. However, those who point their bikes into the abyss and hope for the best will see the most advantages. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment with any questions or critiques, and subscribe for more mountain bike tech breakdowns. Please visit us at mtb.dev for citations, transcripts, and more resources.